You might see giant clams in the movies and think, that can't be real. And when you see them in the water for the first time, it's still hard to believe until you get close enough to appreciate their size, observe how they filter the water, and see their spectacular colors that give them the power of photosynthesis. This is why there are several projects to raise them in nursery settings for aquaculture, Pacific Island culture, and especially biodiversity and species preservation. One such project is currently in progress on Guam, led by Frank Roberto from the Guam Department of Agriculture. So this project is to import uh, 1,000 clams from Palau, and importing the endangered clams from Palau will, be, um, not, will not be permitted with this new proposed listing, so I won't even be able to do that. He's referring to a proposal by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration to protect several species of giant clams under the Endangered Species Act. Normally, conservationists and natural resource managers celebrate more protections, but this time is different. It's easy and right to argue for the need for protection of various species. However, local scientists challenge this specific proposal on scientific grounds. Here is Mike Gowell, who has worked in Pacific Island governments and the U.S. federal government over a 50-year career, talking about the data and studies informing this proposal. Some of it is really questionable. Uh, they're using it in a way that it really isn't meant and uh, there's a bunch of gaps and particularly we had some really good scientific work by scientists based here in Guam uh, ab about giant clams in particular and uh, it's not there they haven't recognized that and they haven't uh, gotten enough information from people that are known to be the experts on giant clams in recent years, the global conservation community has begun to recognize that indigenous peoples have been effective stewards of their natural resources for millennia. So much so, NOAA has guidance on including indigenous knowledge in their decision-making processes. NOAA did host one public hearing on Guam, however, it was not well attended. The Guam Department of Agriculture independently held two more public forums in which they gave presentations on the matter. Here is Mr. Roberto from the agency again to share more of his perspective. So you represent the local government. You actually do manage our resources with giant clams. So how is this going to affect your job? Um, it affects my job because it limits a lot of the permitting aspects that are already difficult to begin with. And being an being an indigenous biologist, it's it's very very difficult because when you're really close, when you're very connected to your culture, it's always an uphill battle. Not only do you have to adapt to Western uh, the Western system of gathering scientific information, but you also have to uh, you also have to abide by the federal regulations. And a lot of times, it doesn't allow us to be able to do the types of projects that really make a meaningful impact in our community to be able to sustain our culture and sustain our environment. Here and at other times, Mr. Roberto talks about his project to bring back more species of giant clams. He explained his project is ultimately for more than scientific purposes. Use it in a sustainable way, not only to perpetuate our culture, but also to provide some sort of um, food security and um, connection to the environment and our culture. And the largest species of giant clams around Guam died out 10,000 years ago. Yet today, Chamorros adorn themselves with jewelry made from their shells, or more accurately, from their fossils, harvested from land, made possible by eons of sea level change. Though taken from land, or regardless of species, these symbols of our culture would be confiscated if sent through the mail to a loved one, or worn through an airport. Members of the public also spoke in this forum, and each one shared reservations about, or outright opposition to the proposal. I think the proposal has merit in the sense that it is, it is through goodwill, but however, the proposal, which is a top-down approach by the federal government through NOAA, it completely ignores the people here in Guam, the territories, because it affects the territories as well. It completely ignores them. All who spoke shared in the desire to protect giant clams. Some even pointed out that they're already protected through cultural practices and with local laws which are enforced. The Endangered Species Act has done the world many favors and has certainly prevented several extinctions. However, in this specific circumstance, the voices of the people speaking all say, not this time. Whether you support or oppose this proposal, or if you believe there is information that will better inform it, you are encouraged to submit a comment on this page on NOAA's website. 
The last day to submit comments regarding this NOAA proposal is February 19, 2025. Indigenous people, need some moral people who have been here for the past 3,500 years. We know our land, we know our ocean, we have been perpetuating and preserving our HEMA, our resources here for that long. 